Well, welcome back here on Hospitality Today Live on this special edition of International Hospitality Women's Day 2022. Um, gosh, again, we are so delighted here to be with um, our special guest from the country of Ukraine, Sofia Kayenska, uh, the acting director actually at Lviv. I know I'm saying it right, Convention Bureau. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> yay, you're training me well. Um, we're just so happy to have you uh, here on this special day, Sophia. You've already given us so much information pertaining to uh, what is going on in Ukraine. And at the same time, uh, I, I know that there's some kind of famous projects that you are doing in your wonderful, wonderful town in Ukraine. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, our uh, our city is very uh, famous for IT uh, cluster. Uh, that's actually um, the the bunch of uh, companies who are working um, in IT sector in Ukraine. They are outsourcing to the US, uh, to Canada, to some other uh, worldwide um, you know countries. Um, and that's great to know that our specialists uh, are really great um, at this point. And uh, with their help, we are actually uh, trying to keep up uh, um, and to save our economy. Not just them, of course, but um, they, they actually, um, those who... Uh, uh, who bring um, money from outside, not the inside uh, budget. Uh, so we are really happy that we have this um, uh, IT arena uh, conference in Lviv. It's one of the biggest uh, IT conferences uh, in Ukraine. Yeah, so that, that's really great that it's in Lviv. We are really proud of this. Um, and we are also, as a city, working on uh, our project. It is called Unbroken. Uh, it's the rehabilitation center for people who actually were uh, affected by war, uh, who need help, uh, like the medical, um, uh, the the um, the mental, uh, to, to you know, to to to. To, to work on your mental health and so on. So um, it is uh, it, it costs a lot, but we are sure that we will cope with the task because uh, a lot of people actually need help right now and they will need help um, later. So uh, I want to emphasize on this as well because it is really important for all the Lvivians, like people who live in Lviv and in Ukraine as well, because when people need rehabilitation, it is great when uh, their uh, relatives, uh, their... Uh, sorry, that's the air raid siren. That's what happens on live. <laughs> I hope it's not meaning something's going to be happening in your town. <laughs> I hope so, because, the, you know, we have these uh, messages when it comes. Um, oh. So, yeah, we go to the shelters. Uh, right now, I feel pretty safe at my home because, you know, um, I don't go to the shelter, but we have this rule of uh, four, um, four walls that you have to be uh, like, you know, um, oh. if you don't, if you don't have the shelter, the thing what, that you can do, you can do to the place uh, where the four walls are and to be, you know, uh, you are safer there. So that actually was a real life siren. Yes. Informing people in the town of Lviv uh, that there's some warning um, pertaining to the war and yes. asking them to go to the shelter now. That's correct. Oh yeah, so we, we have it uh, around the city, but um, I was also telling you about the app uh, that uh, actually, <laughs> that's when we are, uh, we are talking about IT, uh, that our specialists uh, actually, uh, um, you know, uh, designed. Uh, right. and it's on our phones and it doesn't matter if you have like a sound on or off uh, you will always hear the siren and they also uh, have this for the um, radiation attacks some other you know because here in Lviv we have fortunately just this siren but uh, in the other cities so there is uh, also um, the danger of other, uh, not just shellings, but uh, radiation and uh, some other attacks. So it is informing them as well, like to go and to be safe. Wow. Yeah. And, and, because, <laughs> and because your house is built structurally different, your house is your shelter. You're uh, okay. 
kind of. So I go to the bathroom when the siren is on, but no worries. We oh. still have some time because, you know, when uh, there is a shelling, there, there is a shelling from Belarus. So it takes like okay. 10 minutes to come, seven, 10 minutes to come to Lviv if it comes. Right. Uh, right. And from, uh, from uh, the Black Sea, so it takes some time to, to come here. But yeah, we are really, you know, um, we are proud of our armed forces. We are proud of the people who actually defend us, uh, that they do it really great um, during all this time. So we are trying to, you know, to come down. <laughs> wow, you seem so very calm um, and so brave. Um, and I'm hoping that the Americans are doing a good job of, of helping defend your, your wonderful country as well. I just know when this is all over, Americans are going to be fleeing to your country um, in even more support. Uh, because right now, we know that we can't travel in, but obviously you can travel out. Um, but especially when sirens like that, I mean, I can't believe we heard this live on this broadcast just now. <laughs> that is really scary. How many times a day do you hear that? uh so now it's more rarely like on the um on, at the beginning of war it was uh like it, it could be like three four times a day uh but right now it's like once a day once in two days it depends on the, the whole time we're the doing in all time we're doing this live broadcast that's when it goes off so as long as you're still safe and not have to run off in the middle of this broadcast <laughs> Well, and, and to me, it, it, at first I thought it was a cat, but but that was a, a siren. And I know you have a cat, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and uh, I hope the animals there are, are staying safe. I mean, not just the people, but the animals. Uh, yeah, actually, um, there was, uh, you know, at the beginning of the war when people fled from uh, all parts of the country, uh, they were not just having their bags uh, full of uh, documents and some other supplies, clothes, whatever. They also took uh, their pets with them. So the cats, the dogs, even sometimes the sheep. So uh, it, it also like, you know, you, you have your priorities and those people's priorities was uh, this human, um, human, uh, yeah. Way away, and the, wow. the priority was to take your cat, not your clothes. Wow, wow, yeah, you, you can't forget the animals, that's for sure. So, uh, switching gears just a little bit from you know what's been going on in your country down to you know what's going on in the hospitality profession within your country, uh, let's discuss mice, which um has to do with meetings, incentives, uh, conferences, and expositions, and Ukraine, you know, to the world. Uh, what is the reaction, the mice re industry reaction on the Russian invasion? Um, well, at first it was, you know, uh, nobody knew how to react, I think, because a lot of people had business with Russia and it was, you know, uh, it was just a matter of time when they decide not to have business with Russia. And I'm really grateful to all uh, the associations, to all the organizations who actually cut on uh, uh, traveling uh, to Russia, cut on uh, having bus uh, having uh, some uh, projects, uh, uh, like common projects together, uh, cut on uh, the membership uh, in associations or, or just suspended like till, till the end of war um, that they started. So, yeah, the first days was like it, it, there was no sound uh, of the industry, but later we saw this huge support. Um, so we went to uh, IMAX. Uh, I became uh, to IMAX in Frankfurt. Uh, I became the member of uh, MPI organization, and I flew uh, to uh, to the US. Uh, so it was also, you know, um, kind of. Uh, uh, the, the 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 challenge uh, to me as well because I didn't have visa at the beginning, uh, but we could do it together with MPI. Um, so I'm really grateful uh, to this organization as well for this huge huge support because uh, the Poland chapter um, was the initiator because I'm the member of Poland chapter right now oh, because we oh. don't have Ukraine chapter, um, oh. and they were really great because they started the campaign. So they were uh, talking to the board of trustees. Hey, maybe there will be um, the, the, they could have the um, the funding. Um, 
the crowdfunding or just you know uh, collecting money for the students from Ukraine who actually um, are studying in uh, Poland in Vistula University. So MPI collected thirty thousand uh, dollars to 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 like from these donations uh, to give to Ukrainian students. Uh, so I'm really happy uh, that the students who actually were from Mariupol, uh, from uh, Kharkiv, uh, from other cities in Ukraine who were actually under attack like badly, so badly, they had this opportunity to continue their studying, uh, hospitality actually studying uh, at this university. So yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's amazing. Great to hear. That's great to hear. I'm, I'm glad uh, you, you have worked so hard uh, to get the word out there, there's no doubt, and getting involved where you need to be involved. It's it's only going to be a, a positive when this whole war is over to where Ukraine is definitely going to be on the map, especially in the hospitality industry. And, and just about three or four months ago, your bureau launched what is called industry talks during the war. So, boy, you've even done that. And, and it's about you know, what you are doing now and in the future, which again, Ukraine is going to be on the map for. So what are the, some of the things that you share on um, on this uh, uh, launch? I guess it's on YouTube and yep. anybody can, you know, watch it. Um, and if you can speak the language too of Ukraine, um, but what are some of the things that you all talk about? Um, what are some of the things that you've learned, the tips or ideas, uh, especially during the war for your country? Yeah, so uh, actually the idea was after we had the marathon uh, dedicated to Global Meetings Industry Day in April. Um, so we did it with our Polish colleagues. So, so you can it, it's also on uh, our YouTube of uh, Lviv Convention Bureau, so you can watch it easily. Um, and then there was uh, the Global Exhibition Day. So we decided to talk to our um, colleagues from the industry, uh, from um, uh, from Ljubljana in Slovenia, uh, from uh, Prague, uh, to Karina Bauer, uh, from IMAX, and some other our colleagues, and then with Ukrainian um, with Ukrainian specialists um, as well, um, and to see uh, different points of view, how the world sees uh, sees the war in Ukraine, and how our uh, colleagues uh, from the industry are coping with the tasks uh, that are here because a lot of people actually lost their jobs because of uh, the war and they are, were trying to rebuild their work uh, to see what they can do. Uh, some of them uh, actually went uh, abroad uh, because we were talking to Anna Petrova. Um, we are also um, doing the subtitles, so uh, the Ukrainian experts will be uh, available to English-speaking countries as well. Um, so she organized MMP forum uh, in Ukraine last year, and they actually had the collaboration. They came uh, with a fam trip uh, after uh, MMP forum to Lviv. Uh, and the, right now she's in Germany, but she's also, you know, um, having all these contacts. She's also planning her um, uh, her activities uh, of her company and uh, the ladies and the men who are working uh, with her. They also have jobs because of the um, because of the collaboration around the world, because this MMP forum, not just in Ukraine, it, uh, you know, uh, goes uh, it, it can go to Germany, to Azerbaijan, to other countries. So th that's really great that it's rotating. Right. And we are we were, we were talking to her. How, how is she doing with that? And we were also talking to our colleagues who um, who actually are here, how they are doing, um, and what can like international uh, colleagues do uh, to help Ukrainians. Um, so yeah, the, the main thing was that people wanted to work, you know, and the pandemic, you can't work. And the war, again, so what to do? One of the PCOs actually uh, organized their, uh, their colleagues uh, from around Ukraine and they created the NGO, um, Volunteer Hundred, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they like, they they actually used their uh, knowledge of the event organizers uh, to collect all the humanitarian help uh, to spread to their colleagues uh, around Ukraine because you know they're they're 
contacting, they're co cooperating, and that's really great that they have, you know, the reliable people um, in their um, in their circles, and that's why they actually can easily uh, like transport uh, some things from Lviv to. Um, to, to the eastern and southern parts when it's safe, you know, because uh, not a lot of um, not a lot of cities are safe right now. Right, right. Well, and uh, that is wonderful to hear how everybody is coming together. And and I have to tell you, building up to today's special edition show, so many people have been so excited to hear from you. And yet, one of the main questions that we've been getting is, how do we help? How does somebody in the hospitality industry or any company organization around the world can actually help without, um, you know, belonging to a donation bucket or anything like that? Is there what can we do other than pray, uh, which we all are doing? But more importantly, what are your suggestions on how anybody can help? Yeah, so um, as I told, a lot of uh, people from the industry actually lost their jobs. So uh, when there is uh, a woman from Ukraine uh, that is uh, the expert uh, in um, tourism or event organizing, just take her and uh, let her, you know, work because uh, all the money, uh, all the donations will definitely go to Ukraine. So we don't want, uh, you know, the easy money let's say we we are not these kind of people uh we just want to work and then donate as well um the other way um just to call us to to some um, you know the the educational sessions or the interviews oh. uh, or uh some events where we can go uh because okay. like yeah we were really happy to be like the the recent uh, the recent business trip was actually Conventa in Slovenia. We have our good friends, uh, like the organizers of this uh, exhibitions. Uh, ex yeah, because it's like long-term um, uh, exhibition. And they actually said, hey, we don't want the money, uh, just come. So uh, just come and have business. Yeah, because we know that the business will not come, uh, for example, this year, maybe not uh, on the first part of the next year, but it definitely will come uh, in the future. And we, we want to be uh, ready for this. And oh. that's uh, great. Yeah, because, uh, you know, at IMAX, some of people, uh, told us what are you doing here uh, there is war in your country and we said like yeah but uh, you will uh, want to come to us after the, the ukraine's victory so we want to have uh, the contacts we want to be friends with you and we want to share like you know you will be the first one uh, that we will share the information with um, so nice. yeah that so that's another another way why we are going to those uh, international events and we are also telling people um so what is going on because you know you see like the bloody war like every day uh at tv screens but you rarely see uh, what is your industry what is what are your colleagues from the industry are doing like daily right. um so yeah so that's another one um of course our um our armed forces are like the first point how we can win this war so if you have the opportunity please donate to some funds uh which actually support uh, the armed forces because without them like humanitarian help that's really super great but what we need like more uh, is actually donating to our armed forces and uh, to medical supplies because we need uh really good medical su uh, supplies uh, here in Ukraine. Um, uh, so that's, that's really important. And well, that, um, um, that sounds like really three great ways to to be involved in order to help. And we'll get that information to the viewers for sure. But uh, that's that's the main thing right now is is helping Ukraine. Um, it's amazing how resilient and brave you all are. I know I couldn't handle hearing those sirens on a daily basis. It would freak me out. Um, but uh, my goodness, we're just we're just so delighted to hear from you and, and reaching out to you was so easy. And we know everyone else would like to contact you as well is, is that okay we'll give the contact sure. information to to everybody i think would be um a big plus so 
obviously they can get a hold of you by email. Uh, for any questions, contacts, again, we're going to get that uh, those three areas uh, uh, to everyone as well that are, are watching because what better way than, than at least having some options to take back to your office to share or you know talk to your family to to share and contact you directly if if anything so uh, that uh, that is key that is really key uh, boy we, this this time with you went really really fast um, you thank you so just, much information in my head I know, I know we'll have you back I promise we'll have you back for more it's just uh, you're a beautiful person a beautiful spirit and heart. Uh, we wish you all the best. Stay, stay safe <laughs> is what we say. Um, but we certainly are happy that you were able to join us. And you wore green, which I forgot to mention at the yeah. top of the show. Green is our color for International Hospitality Women's Day. And as you can tell, it's supported around the world, even in the beautiful country of Ukraine. So thank you, Sophia. Uh, we are so delighted to have you. And uh, my goodness, we'll be close in touch and have you back on the show very, very soon. Thank you, Deborah. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Really, uh, all this time it just <laughs> fled. So um, yeah, so hopefully we'll have a chance to talk more. We will, we will. Thank you. Thank you so much.